had to make a quick stop at the fucking pot shop so the pot hits get some weed <laughs> first day out with the new company going pretty good so far um, I can tell by looking in the cracks and the crevices that the driver before me in this truck was probably kind of a fucking pig because I took my my polar pin and got down in the crack between the fridge and the bed pull out like fucking ketchup packets and headphones and casino ID and fucking silverware and napkins all Oh, uh, hard mics. You know, the alcohol drinks. Three of those caps. So he's up here boozing it up a little bit. <clears throat> you know, shit like that. So I guess the company probably could actually clean this truck more than what I realized. It was probably messy. I think it's going to come out to be pretty good, but it kind of amazes me how much damage you can do because it's like the plastic is scratched up and shit. Like, what, what the fuck were you doing in here, man? I turned in one that had 480,000 miles on it that I got brand new and it didn't have nothing wrong with it at all. But it worked out pretty good. I was basically a rookie this morning, you know, going from driving a Kenworth and then going back into an automatic again. I had to kind of relearn the automatic. It felt really weird at first. My fucking foot kept trying to find the clutch and I'm trying to grab the shifter and it just felt really strange. I'm used to it again now. And then hooking onto a 53 after pulling that little melt tanker. It took me kind of a second to get used to that. The lady at the shipper, she was like, asked me if I was new. <laughs> but I do got to throw in a little tip on that for the people who are like learning about trucking or uh, new at it. You always got to make sure you check the shit out of your paperwork. Like generally, they're going to pick up a load. You're going to give them your pickup number. And then when you get your paperwork, you're going to double check the address is the same address that your dispatcher gave you and then you're going to check your trailer number is the same and you're going to check your seal right well with this load right here when i got the paperwork i had multiple stops like six or seven addresses in there but none of them were the address that i'm told to go to right <clears throat> so what that means is that i'm taking this to a warehouse and then they're going to go deliver it to the seven different addresses. You don't want to be clear the fuck out in Iowa and find out you grabbed the, the wrong load. I did that once in my first year trucking. I grabbed the, lo the wrong load. And I drove about four hours with it before they figured out I had the wrong one. And the only reason they figured it out is because the next driver came to grab his load. His load wasn't there. And they realized I had his load. It sucked. I had to turn back around with it. It was paper logs back then, so I had to just run it anyway, so I lost four, well, I lost eight hours, because four hours depth and four hours back, and then I still had to run my other load. It sucked. But I thought it was interesting when he called me that um, they don't got no trackers on this truck. This is the first fucking trucking company I've worked for in, damn, probably ten years or maybe even longer that doesn't have any trackers on our truck. They don't know where the fuck I'm at. It's like old school trucking. It's awesome, because I'm doing my logbook on my phone. Um, the truck does 72, so that's cool. And it seems like a pretty good truck. Um, they got pre-pass and I-pass and all that kind of shit that you want to have. I'm getting used to being back in the plain old white Freightliner thing. Cause I'm a little bit stuck up these days. I've had trucks that were polished out. You know, the wheels and tanks were polished and they were either black or gray or, you know, they were just nicer looking trucks. And this is just a plain old run of the mill truck. But I got it washed and it cleaned up pretty good. Unfortunately, that's what it looks like when you die in your truck. Somebody perished over there. And they just pulled his body out and stuck it in the back of that Tahoe. It's a reality. First delivery arrival. Sometimes you gotta walk like a hundred fucking miles because there ain't nowhere to park, but we're gonna get her done. Damn bonus on this one, huh? I thought I was live unloading. Fucking dropping hook, man. Dropping hook and I can run medical exempt back so technically I could drive all the way back now is my ass gonna drive 1200 miles no but I'll probably do like 800 
So that's pretty cool, man. And I'm basically just starting my week because I left early, so I got five more days of running. Probably get some damn good miles in this week. And this is the latest ride. Morning time, everybody. What's happening? So, so far, shit's going pretty good here. Um, I know if you ever watched my first week melting video, shit was going pretty good there for a while, too, so. You never fucking know. I figure I'd just check in before I get rolling here. Um, the owner called me yesterday just to see how everything was going, so I thought that was pretty cool because lately I've been working for companies that, um, you don't ever even meet the owner, let alone he gives you a call on Sunday to see how shit was going. And I could tell by talking with him that he is going to be pretty easy to get along with in a lot of different areas. Uh, no micromanagement, you know, all that bullshit. But then as far as his truck goes, I like it. I got it cleaned up. I'm getting used to driving the Freightliner again. And then the automatic part... I'm feeling a lot better about that and uh, I'm getting used to it again that's the whole thing getting used to it and stop reaching for the shifter and trying to find the clutch you know and overall I like it man it's like you know just cruising it makes my job a lot easier just cruising around not fucking around shifting a hundred times and all that bullshit but I could tell by talking to the owner that in a few weeks I'm gonna be like Yo, dude, how do you feel about me taking these wheel covers off and uh, getting all the chrome for the wheels? And I know I can just tell he's going to be like, hell yeah, go for it, dude. And he'll pay for all the chrome. Which, it is just a basic white Freightliner. I get that. It's not a pimp daddy ride. But they look a lot better, man, when you don't got them stupid wheel covers on there. I drove one for four years with wheel covers on it, but... That company wouldn't let me take the fuckers off. He found out that I used to be a shop manager through the mechanic that I was seeing. And he was questioning me about that a little bit. Like why I stopped being a mechanic and became a truck driver. Because I guess in a roundabout way, the more I got to thinking about it, that is kind of some wasted talent, I guess, really. You know, driving the truck versus all the shit I know about the trucks. So he actually offered me a fucking job as a mechanic. And he told me like, if I ever wanted to get out of the truck and change my mind, then let him know and give me a job as a mechanic. So I ran out 860, 840 miles yesterday. I call that a good day, you know, 840 miles. Day before that was like 700. Day before that I believe was only 500 because I left really early to come out here because I wanted to get the truck set up and shit so I spent like 18 hours in the truck stop which I needed to do because I wanted to get my truck all fucking spiffied up and all that good no goodness you know so so far so good you know it's always hard to tell with the new company sometimes they give you all the good shit at first to try to you know suck you in sometimes they don't run you worth a shit at first because they don't trust you it just there's no real rhyme or reason to it Every company is a little different, you know. But I do believe these guys got the miles. I passed some of their trucks going out about four, which they only got 18 or 20 trucks. So I was kind of thinking they got a lot of freight going out that way and this medical exempt shit. So I'll probably have an over 4,000 mile week for sure. I'm just not sure how far over 4,000. But I won't, you know, on a regular basis because I got the home Friday and out Monday deal going on right now. Keep everybody happy. So with that said, I certainly was sad about that guy dying in the truck stop. I will say that. I don't know. I woke up the next morning and looked over at the truck and just thought, man, that's fucked up. I've seen it before. Um, <clears throat> one of my friends, his grandpa, back in the day, came up missing out on the road you know before we had cell phones and gps and trackers and all that shit and it was like fucking two weeks later finally someone realized this truck had been sitting there too long got a hold of somebody or whatever and they figured out where he was at right well he had died in the truck and he was in there for like two weeks so you can imagine how that was 
they went and got him out, you know, the coroner. But the truck has to be recovered. So my friend Matt asked me if I would take him out. So I drove him out and uh, he drove it back. And I tell you what, dude, that, that fucked Matt up, really. I mean, first of all, that fucking truck stunk bad. I mean, really fucking bad. The decomposing body in the fucker. We opened the door. Because at first, I was going to drive it back. Because it was his grandpa, you know. I just thought it would be better if I drove it back. He was kind of arguing with me a little bit. Like, no, it was my grandpa's truck. I'm driving the fucker back, you know. Because he, he ain't, his grandpa willed him the truck. So it was going to be his truck. Well, we opened the door on that. And I was like, fuck, no. I can't drive that fucker back, dude. He drove that shit back, and I tell you what, in all honesty, he was never the same after that. And then, that poor guy had so many tragedies, he ended up killing some people out in the rig later on and going to prison for it. Just a fucked up life. But yeah, that shit happened. It's amazing what a 45 minute nap will do for you. And before people get carried away, it's uh hands-free activated on my phone and my phone is in a mountain so as far as I know it's legal so it can't be all oh he's recording while he's driving this is how it is and how it's gonna be but anyway we're doing a little bit of a mission run of a sort and I'm kind of surprised this company here potentially I could make more money here than I was at the last company and that really surprises me because I thought I was uh, pretty well maxed out at the last place but these guys are some fucking runners let me tell you coming out of Denver last night or yesterday and they wanted that load over there so I ran uh, you know like 850 miles somewhere around there and then I just slept for like 6 hours got up got back after it right well, when I was getting after it this morning, the dispatcher gets a hold of me and says, uh, how soon can you be over there? I got another hot load for you, so on and so on. And we discussed that. So he gave me this load going down to Chattanooga, Tennessee, delivering at 8 a.m. tomorrow morning. Wasn't gonna be too bad. You know, I wasn't gonna be able to take a full 10 down. I was gonna need to run out, you know, eight, 900 miles or something for the day. You know, so good day for sure, but it wasn't gonna be that bad. So I'm like, all right, yeah, whatever. That sounds cool. I'm actually, kind of happy to see that they're gonna keep me running, right? Well, I know I don't even make it all the way back over, and he get and then he calls me and he's like, man, can you help me out? Blah blah blah. You heard that before, right? Can you help me out? Can you help me out? We're always helping you out. So. He's like, I got this load going to New Jersey. My favorite place. I love the fucking East Coast. <laughs> I'm like, all right, do tell. What's going on with that? And he's like, it needs to be out there at 8 a.m. Can you do it? I'm looking at my shit. And I'm like, no, nah, dude. I'm like two hours away from where I got to be to deliver this load. You want me to be out in fucking New Jersey tomorrow morning at 8 a.m.? I was like, really? And uh, he's like, oh, you know, it's hot load, all that dispatcher shit. Well, he's talking. I'm kind of doing the figuring in my head. And I'm realizing, like, damn, I actually could probably get pretty fucking close to that. I could make it out there at 8 a.m. But I'm also thinking, like, I'm new here. And I don't want this dude to get in the habit of me being the fucking guy he calls up run these miracle loads right so he says all right you know what time do you think you can get it out there i said ah, noon <laughs> and he's like noon that's the best you can do like, yeah probably noon he's like can you do uh like 10 or 11 in the morning you know because they want it there at eight like, yeah i could do 10 or 11 in the morning say all right cool great man you know i mean the sooner the better and all that shit right so we get off the phone and i realize uh 
Well, first he gave me the option if I wanted to do the New Jersey or just go ahead and keep the Chattanooga. But when I got off the phone, I realized, like, damn, that really ain't that bad, you know? Like, <sighs> I don't know. I'm going to have to run eight or nine hundred out today, you know? But uh, I'll still be able to sleep like six hours tonight. I don't sleep much more than that anyway. So I'll probably get there about nine thirty. Fair. Not to push it. I mean, I could be there at eight, of course. I'm running on medical exam, but I do like to sleep a little bit, you know. Well, then, supposedly the bonus on that, he was saying, is like, then you get, you can get back Thursday afternoon, you know. It's my scheduled days off for Friday. Get back Friday, have Saturday, Sunday off, go on Monday. So I'm assuming I'm. A, he's saying I'm going to have Friday, Saturday, and Sunday off. Which, I don't know if I buy that whole thing because come tomorrow, oh, and this is a turn and burn, drop and hook, coming back. So, come tomorrow, when he realizes that I'm going to be back and he can still run me on Thursday and Friday, he's more than likely going to call me and be like, hey, did you want to stay out a couple more days? And I'm going to say, fuck oh, yeah, why not, man? I'm out here to make money. As long as I get home, you know, i got Saturday and Sunday off. Because if I just go back on Thursday, it's going to get me somewhere around 3,600 miles. That's not a bad week, right? Um, if I run a couple more days, obviously that's going to put me up into the, you know, 4,500 mile range. So that'd be a damn good week. So either way it works for me. But I will say that I would much rather do this fucking New Jersey than that Chattanooga. Because when you go down to Chattanooga from Michigan, you got to go down 31 through Indianapolis. And then from Indianapolis down to Louisville, there's quite a bit of traffic and shit. Then you got Louisville. And then from Louisville to Nashville, quite a bit of traffic and shit. And then you got Nashville, you got a fuck ton of traffic in it. And then Nashville over Chattanooga is just a fucking two lane, you know, interstate, but still a lot of traffic. So it's kind of not that smooth, you know. It's not the end of the world, but it's not that smooth. Well, with <clears throat> you run out to New Jersey from Michigan, <clears throat> it's fucking turnpike all the way out. I'm on the turnpike right now. It's just straight fucking hammer down on the turnpike. And I'm, I'm delivering like right off the turnpike. Drop, rehook another medical exempt load so I can balls to the wall back. So ultimately it worked out pretty damn good. Well, I guess I'm going home, huh? Went out to New Jersey and delivered my load. And I am going to be back tomorrow morning, which will be Thursday morning. And I guess I'm going home because that's what he said yesterday that I can get back Thursday afternoon. I don't know if his calculator is working correctly. Because I don't even have to really use the medical exempt and I'll be back tomorrow morning. But it is what it is, right? So I'll have 36, 3,700 miles, something like that on by the time I get back tomorrow morning. If I ever get out of this fucking traffic jam right here. And that's good enough, I guess. I'm kind of surprised because I technically don't go home until Friday. So I kind of figured they would just run me as much as they could. But I will tell him tomorrow that me and I got home so early on Thursday, I'll be fine with going out Sunday. And that'll make a nice start to next week, right? So I got another little trucker tip, you know, because I always got my fucking know-it-all trucker tips. That an old guy told me, like, 20 years ago, <clears throat> that made a world of difference in my career. So yesterday, you know, he wanted me to hot run that load out there. And it was a hot load. He wasn't bullshitting, because when I got there, they were waiting on it, and the guy was happy to see it. But they wanted it there at 8 a.m. I ended up getting it there at 10 a.m. 
which was discussed because when he asked me if I could do it, I was I told him I could get it there by 11. But if I would have got it there by 8, I would only slept like 4 hours last night. And I decided that I didn't want to do all that cowboy shit. Because I ran like 800 miles. Over 800 miles. And then uh, shut down and slept for 6 hours. Which I thought was pretty fair. Got it out there at 10 o'clock. So yes, there is a point to my rambling. 20 years ago... I used to get my fucking self all worked up, you know? And I'm assuming probably newer people do the same shit. Because when we are at work, we want to do our best and we want to do what they want us to do and do our job correctly and all that sort of stuff, right? Most of us do. Some people don't give a fuck. So when I was younger and they would want, they would sign me like these loads or whatever, I would run through the night, you know, it was all paper logs back then. I'd run through the night, I'd do all this crazy shit, and it was day in, day out, because the bottom line is, generally, there's always going to be a fucking hot load, you know, every day of every month of every fucking year, there's always going to be a hot load. And I remember rolling into ABC Warehouse to deliver this load, and I'd slept like two hours and ran like a fucking shit ton of miles. And I was having trouble backing up because I was tired as hell. And this guy in his 60s, I believe, was pretty wise, and he could see that the young man was running pretty hard. So he came over and talked to me, and I told him what was going on. And he just looked at me and said, the way I look at it, and the way I tell my dispatchers is the load's gonna fucking get there when the load fucking gets there. So, I kind of live by that rule to, to an extent. You know, I don't stop and go into fucking Denny's and, you know, get food and fucking take a 10 hour break. Or, I mean, if you're on regular logs, you gotta take a 10 hour break, but I don't take a 12 hour break or whatever. You know, I don't fuck around. I do my best. But they seem to be pretty happy with it. So, we are gonna fucking meander our way out back home. Yeah, so you can uh, you can send truck drivers to uh, trucking school, but you can't make them learn common sense, now can you? See how we're all lined up here? You see this truck down here? The one that fell asleep with his headlights on? Which I have done a couple times when you're real tired, but see how far out there in the middle of the road he is? Well, how the fuck is the guy next to him gonna get out when he wants to get out? And now you gotta deal with a big old black man that wants you to move your truck. So, last week was a pretty good week for the first start of the company. I ended up with 3,800 miles on. That fucking sun is bright. Beautiful day up here today. Um, and I ended up getting back on Thursday, so Thursday, Friday, and Saturday off. I'm gonna head back out on Sunday and we'll do her again. But for now, I'm gonna hop on this bad girl because you know how much I love that thing. I probably ought to use them fucking kayaks sometimes this year, huh? Have you used them yet all year? And we're gonna go meet up with some people and go for a bike ride. Had to make a quick stop at the fucking pot shop so the pot hits can get some weed <laughs> it's kind of fucked up because when I was a youngster I used to go to jail for this shit seems like after the stop at the uh, dispensary everyone got hungry all of a sudden so now we're eating Mexican <laughs> imagine it Well, you know what I always say, what a fucking bummer, right? 
the party's over. Now oh, we gotta go back and be a grown up and do our job. I'm supposed to go fucking kayaking this afternoon. And everybody bailed out. They said it wasn't a nice day. It's fucking 82 degrees. What a bunch of idiots, huh? I went shopping. I bought me some clothes, man. And now I'm gonna go home and fucking chillax for a little while. Then we're gonna go to work. Because I'm actually alright with work. A lot of people are like, ah, oh, fucking work, blah, 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 right? Well, that's how you get shit. When you don't be broke. So we'll do that.